Hello everyone, this is Spencer from Hydromantis and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're going to be uh, starting off 2020 here with uh, a webinar that's going to focus on uh, how to get data in and out of GPSX in the most efficient fashion. So we won't be talking too much about wastewater processes today, more about um, software functionality. And we're going to talk about how is the sort of easiest and most straightforward way uh, for you to get the data into the software to set up your simulations in the way that you want to and then how to get those results back out again um, so that you can put them into the reports or use them in whatever other fashion that you want to okay so my name is spencer snowling and i'm the vp of product development here at hydromantis and i'm glad that you've been able uh, to join us today so the plan is i'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the kind of data that is typically used in gpsx and sort of how you need to get that set up and and uh, put into the right places uh, we'll talk about importing data so first of all using data as an input uh, so that you can drive simulations and we'll show you the tools that you can use to to set up everything you need to know and then also how to plot that data that you have to get it into the software so that you can plot it alongside your results as uh, shown here on this slide um, and then we'll take uh, a time to talk about the uh, myriad of different ways that you can get uh, the information out of GPSX. We actually have multiple, multiple ways of uh, exporting out images, data, uh, tables of information and so on and so we're going to cover off um, most of those and then there's a few other advanced data features that uh, i won't go into in great detail today but i will mention them so that you are aware of them okay so typically uh, the kind of plant data that we want to use to run a dynamic simulation is uh, you know, time series, things like flow rates and chemical dosages and concentrations and things that change over time. So this is in and above, you know, the kind of data that you would already normally be using, such as tank sizes and, uh, you know, things that are there to specify the physical configuration of your wastewater treatment plant layout. Um, what I'm talking about here is how to import a large amount of data, a big time series data set so that you can run, say, for example, a 30 or 90 day simulation where the temperature and the pH and the flow and concentrations coming into the plant would change over time. So usually the way that we arrive at that uh, point is that we have um, a bunch of data that we have received um, from our client or if you're the, the actual operator that you have access to to be able to export this kind of data. And a majority of the time that is going to come uh, to be able to be used in an Excel spreadsheet. And usually it's going to be formatted um, like this, where you have a date in the left-hand column, and then you have uh, a number of columns of data that are uh, one data point for each timestamp that you have. So typically things you would see are, are kind of like this. You'd have some flow rates, you'd have some concentrations, and perhaps things like pH and temperature and so on. And you want to be able to set this up so that um, this can either drive a simulation uh, to make changes to an input parameter, or at least you could plot this information alongside the predictions um, of the model. So when you're doing that as a time dynamic input, what you're basically using is our file input controller feature. So you want to have time dynamic inputs, how the flow and concentrations and things are going to change as the simulation proceeds. So let's say you have a data point for every hour and then uh, you run your simulation, GPSX will automatically take that data, make a change to that parameter as the simulation is moving along. So that's one use. And then the other use is, as I mentioned, to plot alongside the model results. So when you are doing it this way, um, basically you're just providing data that's going to be um, seen on the graph. Um, and it's going to show you whether you're doing a good job matching up to the data that you have. Um, maybe, you, uh, you know, this is typically something that we look at when we're doing a dynamic model calibration. Um, where we want to be able to see the prediction of the model alongside the data that we have received from the plant. So when you're doing a, a time dynamic input and you're using that file input controller, you would normally drag the inputs uh, that you're, the input parameters that um, uh, are of interest up onto the input control panel, which is the, on the upper left hand corner of your simulation uh, window. And once you've dragged them up there, you know, when you first drag them up there, typically it's going to be a slider. And that's the kind of uh, thing that most people like to use. 
uh, so that you can see, uh, you know, make changes to the information that's there. You can maybe type in a number and so on. But if, if instead of doing it that way, moving the slider around with your mouse, I want to have GPSX read in a bunch of data and move that around for me. So when you go here, you'll notice if you open up the uh, properties menu that you'll see that, you know, you can set the minimum and the maximum and that we have this file input option that is available. That means it's going to automatically read the files that it has access to and find the data points for this particular parameter. <clears throat> So uh, this is somewhat new in version 8. We've kind of rearranged a few things. Um, and so I'll cover off the things that are new here. But um, basically, the new thing and the most straightforward way to, to set up this kind of a system is to use this new data files button that you will see at the top of your GPSX window. This is the thing that allows you to specify the files that you are going to be reading in uh, that are associated with this layout and then actually control which files are used by which scenarios. Some of them you can have in all the scenarios and some of them you might want to be uh, only for something, uh, you know, a particular cold weather scenario or something like that. So click on that button and it will take you to this menu. So um, this menu is uh, available. It used to previously be available in the scenarios menu. You can still get to it that way too. Uh, but in this menu here, it tells you all of the data files that are associated with this particular layout. And in this image I've captured here, there's actually quite a lot of them. And note that this is specific uh, to each scenario. So you can actually accept this menu and go back to a different scenario and associate a different set uh, of uh, files that would be used for, for this. So, um, and you can have some that are associated only with the base scenario too, if you like. So this is where you tell uh, GPSX uh, which file that you it is that you want to use, and this is particularly good for situations where you've already set up that file somewhere outside of GPSX. You've done your own formatting, and now all I need to do is come here and tell it to use that spreadsheet. So you can add, control what's going on in this window here. You can add and remove and edit the files directly from with these buttons right here. And um, if you want to edit uh, the uh, one of the files that's there, if you see that something that doesn't quite look right, um, if it's a text file, which is a comma delimited or tab delimited file, uh, we'll actually open up our own internal editor for you to make adjustments. Um, or uh, if you're using Excel, if you're using an Excel spreadsheet, then we'll pop up your, uh, you know, your copy of, of Excel, and then uh, you can use Excel to do uh, that kind of editing. So what you'll see here is that this is the formatting style that is required for a GPSX uh, uh, data file to look like when you want to use it. Now, we've got these tools in place to help you build this file with the correct formatting. So, but just to cover it off, if you want to do it outside of GPSX, the very first thing is that uh, the left-hand column should always be time. So always put time in the first column and time and use T to, di to distinguish that. That's the actual, that's the name of the variable uh, time in, in GPSX. And then the next thing you need to do is list on that top line all of the cryptic variable names of the parameters that you are going to be using uh, and reading data in for. So there are lots of different ways to find out what the cryptic variable name is. The most easy one is to just hold your mouse over the name on any one of our menus and it will pop that up for you. You can also, in most places, uh, right click and then just copy it uh, actually as well. So uh, you put those names across the top here. Uh, the next line is also very important. It is uh, the units that you will be reading this into. If you do not have this line, it is going to go ahead and make it the assumption that we're working in the default units. However, um, we can take advantage of the uh, unit conversion features of GPSX. If your data is already in uh, MGD, for example, but um, uh, you know we don't want to read it in, in in meters cubed per day, which is the GPSX uh, default, you can just specify in this row that the data below is being listed in MGD, and then we will uh, convert that for you uh, on the way in. So it's important to make sure that your units match up exactly uh, with the ones that we have in our menus to make sure that it picks that up and, and correctly converts it. Now the next line is also very important. It starts with STD. What this is is the steady state line. So if you are running a, a dynamic simulation, but you've got the steady state box checked, meaning you're going to do a steady state solution first and use that as the initial conditions for moving forward, 
this is the line that will be used during the steady state solution. And it's actually quite important. Uh, you know, you can have a uh, steady state uh, be an average, say, of all of the numbers that are below or some sort of representative thing of the condition of that plant as, as it was leading up to this dynamic simulation. So you can have that and then right away at time equals zero, start using some different uh, uh, data set. So just to keep in mind, that is something that's available for you to take advantage of. And then the rest of the data starting at time equals zero is just whatever values you want them to be. And so you can see them all listed down here below and you can go as long as you need to. And just to let you know, um, uh, you know, this timestamps on the side here, they don't need to be evenly spread out. I mean, a lot of the time your data will be like that anyway. Uh, but if there's some period where the data was bad and you needed to uh, remove that or you had some outliers. Uh, it can be irregular timestamps. So that's no problem. We can handle that. And any place where you have some missing data, you can use a question mark. What that means is um, uh, GPSX will just hold the previous value uh, through that particular point. Uh, and then it will pick up the next value and make that change appropriately. Okay, so now um, the thing that I wanted to highlight that is new is we have this thing called the new data setup tool. And so it's that, that same button that I had before. Um, if you are for the first time creating a data sheet and you want to be able to, to uh, set that up for a particular parameter, so say here we're showing total TKN is something that we want to uh, provide some data for. If you're doing it for the first time, just click on data files here and then click on the new button. And uh, what happens next is you get this little uh, setup wizard, similar to the ones that we use for SRT or defining uh, functions in their define menu. Uh, basically, we're going to ask you, is this an input variable to GPSX or is it an output variable? And then you select which one you want to use. So I'm going to start by showing you the input variables. Um, you select from the ones that you have already dragged up onto the various windows in your input control area. And then you specify a file name. And so we're going to suggest some file names for you based on the layout name. And then uh, you'll be have a spreadsheet created for you. So it'll pop up and open that spreadsheet. And you'll notice at the top, we will have filled in all the information that we know. Uh, the time is going in the left-hand column. We'll use the date uh, menu. And then we can see here, depending on uh, whether you have your GPSX set to SI units or US units, we will use the appropriate units for you. <clears throat> and you can see here that um, we've also filled in the cryptic variable names. That's the one that's usually the most um, uh, uh, laborious to go and find. But as I mentioned, it's not, it's not too bad, but here we have done that work for you. So this is a good way to set that up. And then once you get things rolling, then you're ready to go and make a dynamic simulation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, or actually I've already run a four-day simulation on this particular example, and we can see this is something where data is being read in for a number of uh, different parameters here. Some of them are being held constant and so on. And so we can see that uh, the, the situation here where the effluent quality is changing over time because the loading was changing over time. So if I click on this data file button, um, as I noted before, you can see here uh, that uh, there's a large number of different data files. So I, I will mention that it doesn't actually matter whether you have all of your data together in one file or if you have it spread across many files. <coughs> Excuse me, it'll work either way. So um, in this particular example, there was uh, originally uh, a number of different files that contained uh, data at different frequencies, and so that's why they were split up. But you, if, you, if you want, you can have them all together in one spreadsheet. So you can see here that if I click on one of these and I mentioned edit that uh, it's going to pop that up and we can see here a number of data points for all of the uh, data that's going on and this goes on and on for um, actually many, many days. We got five days worth of data and that's time in that first column. And uh, if I had wanted to set up a brand new uh, uh, file, I would click on new here and as you can see output variables and then these things you can open up and expand and basically this is the same list as you can see over here. So the first step in the process, make sure you got the variable that you want to read from a file dragged up onto this panel here and then we can take it from there. <clears throat> okay, let's click on next. Whoops, I got to select a variable so let's just select that one for fun and when we finish here it's going to set this up and open that in Excel and we can see that everything is ready to go and then starting here I can paste in all the data that I would have. <clears throat> 
Okay, so that's how you do that. Uh, that's a nice way to get everything set up uh, as far as input goes. If you are, are already a veteran uh, GPSX user, you probably are used to setting up your own files outside of GPSX um, uh, where you use the various cryptic variable names. And you can see, of course, the, um, you know, that, that methodology uh, totally still works as well. Okay, so let me go back to my slides. Okay, so now um, let's talk about plotting uh, data alongside the model results. So now this is not input, this is actually putting data into GPSX that is output data. And you want to just plot it alongside the simulation results. Well, essentially it's exactly the same process. You use the output variables box. Uh, you, when you're setting that up, a new file, you click on that same button, you select output variables, and then you'll notice that you, know, you get different options based on what graphs you have created. And so in that case, it actually is pretty straightforward. You just click off the ones that you have data for, and it'll make it that exact same menu for you, and then you can paste in the data that you have. So I'll very quickly mention here that all of this thing that I've covered from the beginning of the webinar till right now is actually uh, covered even in more detail in GPSX tutorial six. So if you open up your copy of GPSX, go to the main or sorry, the help menu manuals and then select the tutorial guide and then flip to tutorial six. <clears throat> Uh, you'll find that you can uh, you can see all of the details here and it'll go through all of the processes for you and you can follow it along. Okay, so uh, I'm going to insert one slide here just to mention one what I feel is an often overlooked plotting function and that is to plot data alongside your bar graphs. Now what I was showing previously were XY time series graphs, and so it was very obvious there was a simulation line and a bunch of data points. But you can do that for bar graphs as well. And you can sort of see here, what you do is you enter in data, it's, it's a completely exactly the same thing as before. You go through that data process, you just gotta make sure you have the right um, bars laid out so that uh, you're selecting the right variable, and then you can enter a time series of data there as well. I find this is actually quite useful if you're working on, say, a BNR project and you've got a profile of, uh, uh, you know, ammonia or nitrate or DO and you want to be able to get the bar graph, which is the reactors in series, uh, nicely lined up uh, with data. Now, if you have measurements for each one of the uh, tanks in series, then that's a nice uh, opportunity to use this. So, and the last time I was using this, it was just for steady state. So. Um, and what you can see is the solid represents the simulation, just the way it does on an XY graph. And it's actually this kind of shadow bar that represents uh, the data point. So you're trying to match the solid bar to the shadow bar, which represents the actual data. So you can see here, this is pretty good fit, but not quite perfect. So the important thing when you're doing this is that you, for a bar graph, you know it's actually a, a, a vector type of variable and it's got uh, five elements in this particular case. So you need to make sure that you've put a bracket at the end here uh, and you want to be able to make sure that uh, you have one, two, three, four, five uh, listed inside those brackets so that you can have a column for each of the variables here. So I was using this example here, uh, steady state, meaning I wanted to display these shadow bars when we're, when we're using steady state only and there's the data points and you can see they match along with uh, the results, not too bad. Okay, so that's all that uh, I wanted to talk about for the input side. So that's getting your data into GPSX. And then now we're gonna move on to talking about getting data out of GPSX. So in this case, it's talking about extracting out a data set that is the results of your simulation. So we have here, it says many methods. It's really true over the years, over all the releases of GPSX we've had over the past 20 years, uh, we've continued to always seem to find a new angle or a new way to get some uh, something that we can put in there that will make your life a little easier. So there's actually about five or six different ways to get data out, probably more than that actually. <laughs> okay, so you can export all of the following things out of GPSX. You can first, first of all, of course, get a time series of any one variable. As long as you've dragged it on a graph, there's lots of easy ways to get that data, like a long column of time and the variable values uh, as it goes. 
you can get practically any image out of GPSX uh, nicely. You can get all the results off of your quick panels when you double click on an object in simulation mode and it puts up that nice summary panel. That thing can be exported. Uh, any tables that you create, the image of the plant layout that you have drawn, um, the contents of a scenario. If you're using the scenario function to set up your input, we can define that nicely. Any of the plant-wide uh, images and di uh, diagrams that we create, such as the Sankey diagram, the energy summary, the costing diagram, and mass balance diagrams, uh, mass balance is the new one that came out in version 8, any of those can be easily exported. And then, of course, we have sort of our let's export everything options, which are for an Excel spreadsheet and also our nice new, in version 8, new Word report that we have created. So let's start with uh, the time series, and I'm just going to have a quick slide here to discuss all of those options, and then we'll run a quick demonstration of that as well. So the time series of any variable. So you've run a simulation, and you've got a result that you're looking at like this, and you seem happy with that. Now I'd like to be able to get that out uh, and use it that information somewhere else. I right-click on that graph, and then you'll see at the bottom there we have options for copy the data to a clipboard. You can then go to Excel and paste that, and this is what it will look like. About 80% of the time, this is a method I use. If I just want to get something out quickly into Excel because I want to do some analysis on it or I want to use it for something else, um, this is the way I do it. Just copy and paste. You can also get the... Uh, oops, sorry. I also wanted to mention... Um, that you can almost get the, exactly the same information by opening up the properties menu and clicking off this little save button. Um, what it will do is actually write that exact same information to a file. And then you can pick it up from there. It will be a dot out file. Um, this is actually the old way of doing things and we have still preserved that methodology if you, if you happen to like that way of doing it. So we can also grab this exact image, same thing. Right click, uh, select uh, copy image to clipboard and then you can paste it into Word or Excel or whatever it is is your favorite way of um, creating your reports. And so that comes across uh, as an image. So here's a quick panel, as I mentioned. You can get that out very nicely too. Um, it's actually a nice button at the top here. You can uh, click on that button and it will allow you to copy all that data or export it to an Excel file directly or export this particular tab uh, directly to Word. Um, here's the Excel option. Uh, you know, these are designed to make it so that you kind of got everything in line. I just want to make a nice quick uh, export of that information and you can do that directly here. I can actually export the image of the plant layout. So that's, I'm talking about the, the actual drawing uh, itself, the way that the plant is uh, laid out and your individual unit processes that you put on the drawing board. So go to the file menu, uh, go to export as image, and we've created a tool here that allows you to do a little bit of editing on that image before you um, send it out uh, to a file. So you can adjust the width and height and aspect ratio. You can turn the labels on and off as you need. We can change the font size. Um, sometimes uh, you'll note if you have a very large complex layout, the font becomes really small, but you can actually come here and blow that up a little bit so that it's pretty clear uh, before you export that. And then we have these two buttons here, the export, either save that file, and then we will by default be saving that to a uh, .png file. That's uh, all the uh, graphics that we do are in PNG files. And then, of course, that copy button. You can copy this exact image and paste it into another document. So contents of a scenario. So you've built a scenario. You have a number of small or, uh, you know, it distinct um, uh uh, input parameter changes that are c collected together and uh, put together and saved under a particular scenario name. But you want to say, I want to just uh, define what that scenario is and export those values. You can come here, use the show button, and then you can copy the contents of that and then paste it into a spreadsheet. This is something else that I find quite handy just to keep track of the different scenarios I'm using and what they're, what they're doing. <clears throat> And as I mentioned, all the Sankey energy uh, costing mass balance diagrams that are available under data visualization button, which is this, this eyeball button here, um, they can all be exported directly. So just pop one up. 
make whatever changes you may want in terms of the color and line thickness and all of the other things you can do there and then use that export button to do same thing as we just showed before either save it to a png file or copy it to be used elsewhere Okay, so um, let's just do a couple of quick demos of that. So, for example, um, here on this graph, I can just, there's the copy to image to clipboard and copy uh, data to the clipboard options. Um, here's that uh, button that I'm using uh, where I could export that, copy that data to a clipboard. I can export that directly to an Excel file, um, or I can uh, do that to a Word file. And the same button is used when I have a, um, uh, quick panel showing and I want to be able to export that same kind of information. All of that is uh, there and easy and ready to go. Uh, so let's take a look at a Sankey diagram just for fun and we can see here that uh, I could for example copy this and I could open Word and we could paste that right in there. So now you could annotate this and do whatever it is that you need to do and so on. Uh, okay, so what I will uh, just briefly mention um, is that there are sort of uh, similar buttons here. You'll notice that this one is uh, create a report and this one is also export out to Excel. These two buttons um, do very similar things. This one is for whatever panel is showing and this one is actually for all of the all of the panels that are in the entire system. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, slides because I'll pick that up next. Okay, so the Excel and Word reports of the entire model are basically going to go through all of the input and all of the output and your drawing board and everything else and assemble a nice big gigantic report for you. So the Excel is back, actually been there for many releases now, and it's kind of like a giant dump of everything in the model. You can actually turn some features off and narrow it down to what you need, but um, it's there and it's available for you. Okay, so you would click on that uh, Word report, or sorry, that report button. Uh, sorry, I've got two buttons highlighted there. It's actually this one, that green one. Um, and uh, so you select the Word report. There's some options that you could click on. Here's the things I want to include or exclude in my Word report. And then when you generate it, you get this nicely formatted uh, set of tables and graphs and input and output. And any place too, by the way, that you have used our uh, notes button in the input menus uh, on the very right hand side, those notes will also be exported into this uh, as well. So uh, this is nice and handy. This is actually new in version 8. We spent actually quite a lot of time on the formatting of this report and I think it's actually uh, turned out really, really nicely and I use it quite a bit now. Uh, when I do want to do a spreadsheet report, this is the functionality that we had previously, which we've now touched up and improved a little bit. Uh, you get something that looks like this, uh, and it's going to be tabs along the bottom for different parts of your input and your output. And you can see here, for example, I get that graph and I get this table. So it's kind of like getting at that same data, just I want everything for every panel, for every object, all together in one spreadsheet. So rather than having to go around and do it, that one button will do it across everything in your model. Uh, okay, so I'll just let's just generate a couple of reports and uh, just to get the feeling for that. So again, if we're doing uh, an entire report for the entire model, uh, that's done up here. Uh, so let's do the word report first. And there's those options. I'm going to leave them all uh, turned on. So let's generate that. It'll give you an option to save a name there. I'm just going to use the default and it will prompt me to open that up, which I'm going to do. And uh, you can see here that it's uh, put a report down and everything's nicely formatted. You can make changes and insert things uh, as needed. Here's the plant description and information and image uh, from the drawing board. And then here's all of the various uh, panels. Anything that you've changed away from the default. Uh, what we do is, let me let me give you a little bit of an example here. Um, in this particular case, uh, this user had changed the alpha values um, in, in this particular system. So what it does is this is here for this particular unit for this uh, uh, mechanical aeration alpha. This is what our, the first column is the default values in GPSX. The second column is the ones that were used in that particular scenario. 
Uh, okay, so it goes through, gives you all of the outputs as well. Any place where you had a graph or a table, I will put that in here as well. And then all of your quick panels will go and then all of your graphs that you have made. And then there's a little summary at the end too. If you've made any other further notes um, in here, let me just skip to the end. Um, it will also do those as well. So I dropped one in earlier, basically just in the uh, ammonia oxidizer growth rate, just saying uh, we calibrated that. And so that has been inserted here at the uh, sort of uh, at the back and a list of all the, the uh, data files that you were using. So I, I sort of feel this is a, a, a nice report that you could use. Um, in many ways, it's sort of a, uh, you know, something you could generate automatically and stick in in the appendix at the back of your report, just as a complete listing of all of the inputs that were used in the model. Okay, so let's uh, wind this up here by uh, calculating a or generating a spreadsheet report. Um, it's very much the same information. In fact, it has got actually more in the spreadsheet report than what is in the Word report, because in addition to all of the graph images, you get all the data too. And um, it also goes through every object, every input panel, every output panel, every input menu and output menu for everything as well. And uh, so those are all tabs uh, along the bottom here. And you can see every graph is showing and all the data down below. So. Uh, it's all there, whatever way you like to use it. Um, it. We, As I mentioned, we've got so many different ways of doing this. You can note here, by the way, you get the simulation results and you get the data points that are on the graph too. Uh, we have lots of different ways of doing it. So uh, hopefully one of the ones is the one that works uh, the best for you. All right, I'm gonna go back to my slides again. <clears throat> okay, so I'll mention a couple of other things that you can do, um, and probably each one of these it would be its own webinar. So um, we do have database functionality, SQL database functionality built into GPSX, and so you have to have the advanced tools package as part of your license in order to have access to this. But you can see that instead of doing a file input, you could actually read directly from a database and you have to specify the database name and provide the password. And you also have to provide the um, details of the table and which cryptic variable that particular field in the table is associated with. So there's some setup that would be there, but then that's another way to read those things in directly. Um, of course, you can also do it with um, Axel directly. So for those of you who are customizers in GPSX or like to write your own code, um, it is possible to also provide input and output via this method as well. Um, way back when and when I was doing my uh, PhD thesis uh, 20 years ago, uh, I actually used this method to because uh, I was generating sets of data files outside. And then I came here through this code to be able to read them in in a certain format that I needed. And then lastly, I think both of those things have almost been supplanted by our new feature, our Python uh, customization, which will allow you to do literally anything you can think of. So um, now the Python uh, add-on module uh, will allow you to do things like connecting to databases and web services and any of that kind of stuff, do whatever calculations you like. And actually getting it back out again is really interesting too, since Python has quite advanced features for data handling, so you could uh, you know, read your GPSX into a pandas data frame and do all sorts of inf uh, interesting things with it uh, after the fact as well. So uh, what I'm going to recommend is if you're interested in this Python uh, customization option, actually December's webinar was about using Python. Uh, pardon me, uh, November's webinar, two, two webinars ago, was about using uh, Python. So uh, go up to our YouTube channel and take a look at that. You can see how that would be done. Okay, so just winding things up here, as I mentioned, there are numerous ways to get data in and out of GPSX. Input requires uh, creating a file that uh, has appropriate columns and formatting uh, for what GPSX expects to do, but we have lots of tools that help you uh, set that up properly. Um, anything that you want to get on the output side, right-clicking on pretty much any output um, in GPSX will allow you a quick copy and paste option to be able to put it into other software. And then, of course, if you want something a little more uh, wide ranging and covering the entire model, then you can use our Word and Excel report generation features uh, to do that. <laughs>